What's up, y'all? It's Shuffle, and we're going to do a region guide for the Tangle in Darkest Dungeon 2. In this video, I'm going to cover the themes of the region, as in what to watch out for. I'll go through each specific enemy that appears in the Tangle, as well as the boss, and by popular request, I will also discuss the trinkets that come from the region, and then finally we'll wrap up with the best heroes to take here. Anyone's viable, but there are a few characters that are a little bit better. As always, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, leave your thoughts down below in the comments, and if you want to help support the channel, there are things like YouTube memberships as well as Patreon, and we have a growing community that you can join Discord for. All of that information is in the description box below. Starting off, what are the themes that you will see in the Tangle? The first one are heavy hits. There aren't really any surprises in terms of mechanics, not like the Sprawl which has Ignite. No, in the Tangle, everything just hits really freaking hard. Second thing, alongside these heavy hits, some of the enemies are capable of bleeding you. Which means that alongside those heavy hits, if you get stuck with the bleed as well, it becomes very dangerous if you reach Death's Door. The final thing for the themes in the Tangle is staying power. I didn't know of another term to neatly pack all of it up. But with the Tangle enemies, they have a lot of block, some pretty good HP, as well as death armor on a couple units. And finally, there is the Bishop who can even revive his allies. The first rank and file soldier to talk about in the Tangle is the Foot Soldier. If you played Darkest Dungeon 1, this enemy is actually very reminiscent of the Bone Rabble. It can use the Trophic Cut to hit you in ranks 1, 2, and 3 from ranks 1, 2, and 3. Move hits pretty hard for something that seems like a fodder enemy. It can also debuff your dot resist, which is only super vulnerable to bleed, and it can prevent block gain. So if you're trying to run man at arms here and tank with all of the block tokens, just be aware if you get hit by one of these, you may not be able to block afterwards. Next enemy to talk about is the drummer. This is probably the most important enemy in the tangle. It's definitely one of the most annoying, also one of the coolest. So there's a lot of things going on with drummer. What Drummer is, is a support unit. It doesn't matter what other Tangle enemies are with him on the field, he has something to do that interacts with all of them. With Foot Soldiers, he can force them to guard him, which makes it very hard to actually do damage to him in a timely fashion. With Knights and Arbalists, he is able to give them specific orders to unleash devastating attacks that they normally don't do, such as Order Volley and Flashing Blade. While a drummer is alive and on the field, all of its allies will have basically move immunity, so you cannot disrupt their formation. And if all that wasn't annoying enough, you need to kill drummer before the rest of the enemies, because if he is the last one alive, he will use a move called Death Before Dishonor, which Sudoku's and then does a bunch of stress. Next enemy to talk about is pretty standard as a range unit, and that is the Arbalist. All they do is a lot of damage, and if you get them up to rank one, then they have to do like a retreating shot, so if there's no drummer there, then it's okay, you can just disrupt them. Otherwise, they have two different normal attacks, which are Serrated Bolt, which does some pretty good damage and bleed you, and then they have Piercing Bolt, which will go through all of your block if you have it. The one to watch out for, though, is Order Volley. So if drummer is there, drummer will go before the Arbalist, Give it the order to volley your team, and then on the Arbalist's first turn, it will almost always use Order Volley, which hits your entire team for some pretty good damage, as well as bleeding them. The next enemy to talk about is Bishop. Bishop will start with its own unique token called Penance. It can have up to three, I think the value is randomized, but whatever special attacks Bishop can do are linked to Penance. So if you see a bishop, make sure you check what penance it has so you know what it is capable of doing. First use of penance is pretty annoying, and that is purge the unworthy, which means if it makes contact with one of your heroes, it will rip off every single token that is positive that they have. The other super big move to watch out for with bishop is when it has two penance tokens, it is capable of reviving dead allies if there is a corpse still on the field. Depending on your team and such, this isn't usually a super big issue, especially if you know how to play around it. However, certain teams or a little bad luck or some mistakes on the player's part can make it so 
that the revive is actually very devastating. Before we talk about the elite enemies, we'll talk about the last signature enemy of the Tangle, and that is the Knight. Knight is a size 2 or large enemy, and it mostly just does a ton of damage. Without a drummer present, Knight will rotate between Biting Blade and Unguard. Biting Blade just does a lot of damage and applies a bleed, and Unguard will clear the Knight's blind and give it block as well as repost. Which means blind isn't too useful of a token against Knight until it uses Unguard, because that's when it will stick. Repost from Knight hits decently hard and it will apply a bleed to you, but it doesn't do as much damage as its other two attacks, thankfully. One other thing to be very cautious of is that Knight has three death armor tokens, which means once it hits Death's Door, you have to hit it a couple more times to finish it off. And Knight, alongside his elite version, are the only enemies currently that get a unique thing once they hit Death's Door, whereas normal characters, heroes, enemies, and the like will get weakened tokens and lose speed. Knight apparently is some Giga Chad that will get a bunch of speed and then bonus damage and he's immune to weaken while on Death's Door. All of that is to say that once you are ready to finish off Knight, you need to make sure that you can do it in such a way that Knight won't get more than maybe one turn in between, otherwise it's going to put out a lot of damage. Just to give you a target priority list, Foot Soldiers are way at the bottom. As annoying as they are, you don't need to kill them first if there are other targets that are more dangerous, which makes Bishop normally the highest priority enemy, unless a drummer appears because then things change a little bit. If there is a combination of an Arbalist and a Drummer together, the Arbalist becomes the top target to take down. If there happens to be a Bishop with them, which is a pretty rare mash of getting Arbalist, Bishop, and Drummer, but if you do find yourself in that situation and you have some Corpse Destruction that can be really helpful, such as Demon's Pull, Magnesium Rain, and such, you want to kill the Arbalist quickly and then get rid of the Corpse immediately. This is only if Bishop has two tokens of Benediction so he can revive the Arbalist, but if Bishop is able to burn his tokens on something else before you kill Arbalist, then don't worry about it. If you have no Corpse Destruction, you need to kill the Arbalist and the Bishop very close together, otherwise Bishop does run the risk of reviving Arbalist and then you're back in this serrated volley order thing of hell. Any other situation that occurs in terms of Tangle enemies, the Drummer is the top target. There are two elite enemies in the Tangle. The first one is Bullseye Barret, which is an elite version of the Arbalist, and essentially just hits a bit harder and likes to mark a target and then start blasting it. Templar plays out very similar to the Knight in terms of skills and death store effects. The one difference between the two of these is that Knight on Repose does damage and then bleeds you, whereas Templar on his Repose will do damage knock you back one space, and then apply a bleed resist debuff. Because of this, strangely enough, it feels like Templar is a bit safer in some circumstances than Knight. The lair boss of the Tangle is Dreaming General. It's a very straightforward fight, but it's a long fight, so it's easy to make a mistake, and the mechanics are rather simple, but they're not super apparent at first, but we'll talk about them now. The General himself actually doesn't do too much. He only has three attacks. The first one is Unsettling Whispers, which does a bit of damage and stress to the target, and has this really annoying thing about it where even if it misses its initial target, it still has a chance to stress the other party members. The next and more signature attack of General is Waking Dead. This attack only shows up every two turns on average, and that is when you hit the tap root and the root gets a stack of its own unique taproot tokens. For Waking Dead specifically, the general will mark two spots on the field and designate where he is going to attack. You cannot taunt this or blind general to get around it. However, you can use guard or move the unit out of that space to somewhere else and then someone who replaces them will take the hit instead. This move can hit incredibly hard, especially if it crits and it will leave your hero with a 4 damage bleed, which if they get crit to Death's Door, it'll finish them off. The final attack that General has is called Nightmare. This does a bunch of damage to your party, 
and only happens if you do a critical mistake with the main taproot mechanic. In all likelihood, if you ever see Nightmare, you have lost the fight. And the reason is, on the way to using Nightmare, your characters are getting essentially permanently stunned until the entire party has it, then Nightmare activates. The main mechanics for the Dreaming General all revolve around the taproot, which is that weird plant at the very back of the enemy formation. The taproot cannot be damaged, it cannot be destroyed, it can't be stunned, but you still need to attack it. The reason is, at the start of every turn after turn 1, so turn 2 and beyond, the taproot will lower vines from the ceiling towards two of your heroes. You cannot get rid of these entirely, but one stack of it is the base, but then two and three are where it gets very dangerous. When heroes have two stacks of the vine, they can still act and do things as normal, but they do accrue a speed penalty. Once there are three stacks of the vine, that hero is totally locked up, cannot do anything except use a Whispering Darkness attack that stresses out the other heroes. What will normally trip up new players is that the growth is not happening on turn one, so even if you want to attack the root because you don't know what's happening and you throw something at it or hit it with Iron Swan for example, nothing will happen except it will get a Taproot token. So it kind of tricks the player into thinking that it's nothing important, but it's actually the most important part of the fight. As stated before, after turn 1, so turn 2 and beyond, the taproot will send two roots down at two of your party members, increasing their creeping vine stack count. The way to pull these roots back and protect your team is to hit the taproot directly. This move does not need to inflict damage, it just needs to make contact and once it does, it will pull back one of the roots randomly. So if you have someone at two, but another person at three, you might get lucky and it pulls the three or just pulls the two. Regardless if it's two or three stacks of the vines, once the taproot does retract it from that party member, it goes all the way back to level one. The easiest, most brain off way to explain this fight is that after turn one, so on turn two, you have to hit the taproot twice per turn to keep all the vines at one, and then that's the fight. Once the vines are handled, you just keep hitting general until he goes down. It may sound simple, but rank four is the hardest rank to consistently hit for most characters. So if you're not running Plague Doctor and Occultus or Flagellant or some kind of combination of characters that can always hit the back as well as hit the general, you're going to have to be very creative on how you handle it. Ideally, you want all four heroes with the ability to hit rank four. It doesn't have to be with a direct attack. It could be something like Bellow, Arthlight from Man at Arms and Runaway, Iron Swan from Hellion. There are a lot of ways to get it done, but just make sure everyone has access to it just in case something goes wrong. The two easiest ways to accomplish this is to run a character like Plague Doctor, Occultus, Flagellant, because they are able to hit the root and the general at the same time. But if you don't have two of those characters, or if your party is just a bit wacky or whatever, then combat items are actually very good. Even if they don't do damage, as long as you throw a combat item that hits the tap root, it will pull back the vines. It might still be currently bugged where the vines don't pull back until the end of your turn, but the combat items will get the job done. One of the best items to do this is actually Linseed Oil. This is an item that doesn't see too much play. However, it stacks up to four. Since it can stack up to four, you can put all of them on one person and they're in charge of just throwing oil at the taproot and that will honestly control it for most of the fight. No matter how you decide to hit the taproot, you'll notice that it begins getting its own tokens. And once these tokens stack up to three, it will cause General to use the Soil Stirs, which is what triggers Waking Dead. Because of the nature of how many times you're hitting the root per turn, normally General is throwing out Stirring Soil and Waking Dead every two turns. It is possible to delay this an extra turn from the beginning if you only hit the root once on turn two. I personally don't find this strategy to be 
desirable because if it gets unlucky on the start of turn three, you can have one of your teammates get wrapped up by the vines entirely. The TLDR for the general after explaining all of that is hit the route twice every turn from two to the end of the fight. Make sure that you have some way to take a 30 damage hit just in case waking dead crits and then have bleed cures. Even though you can't blind waking dead, you can weaken it and you can block it. So any of these combination of things can protect someone from getting one shot. The main threat of general isn't so much the lethality of the fight where people might actually die. Even though he's able to take out heroes, what you need to watch out for is the damage he'll do to your relationships. He puts out a good amount of stress damage and it's a long fight. So if you go in there with a bit of stress on everyone or you don't have a good stress healer or an upgraded stress heal like Inspiring Tune, then general has the ability to set everyone's relationships to zero. While this may not defeat the party immediately, it does have the ability to defeat the party in 30 minutes once they all have negative relationships. You may be thinking to yourself, Shuff, why would I go to the Tangle then? Just sounds like a bad time, you know? We have a plant boss that takes six years to defeat and bleeds and revives. It just sounds annoying. Well, you come here for the trinkets. And fun, but the trinkets are actually pretty cool. The first is Reverberating Redoubt. It is super duper good. It used to be one of the best trinkets in the game. It got nerfed a bit, but it's still very good. The main draw of the redoubt is that if anyone is at two or less speed, when they get hit, they have a chance of getting an extra action. Extra actions are always good in this game, which makes any source of them also good. Getting your tanks, for example, down to that two speed or less can be a bit difficult However, there are items such as pipe weed that you can use in the inn, which lower your speed. Even though the extra action is amazing if you can get it to work, do not sleep on the other part of this trinket, which is if you are attacked, then it sends two damage back to the enemy. Even though it's two damage, it does a surprisingly good job of picking off a lot of enemies, and if they're at death's door and they have their death armor, it even takes off the death armor. The next indelible trinket to talk about is Footman's Grog, and that one is a bit tougher to get easy value out of, but it's really good at making sure your characters don't get hit by vulnerable and weaken. This will keep your tank safe if there are things that apply vulnerable to them after their block, and it will keep your damage dealers putting out a lot of damage if they get hit by weaken. Another inadvisable strategy for that specific scenario is instead of getting two weakened tokens when you hit death's door, you'll get two strength. The next indelible trinket to come out of the tangle is clenching claws. If you are familiar with the jinx quirk, the jinx quirk is a quirk that when you get hit, it will randomly apply a debuff or combo token to the attacker. Clenching claws is kind of like that, but a weaker version. However, it has the ability to stun the target. There are a lot of builds, characters, teams, fights, and stuff that let this trinket really shine, so if you do find it, try and hold on to it. Arguably the weakest trinket out of the indelible selection from the Tangle is the Calibrating Sensor. It's a very simple trinket. If you miss a hit, then you get a strength token. Ideally, you're not missing, and missing just for a strength token isn't exactly desirable. Definitely not bad though, especially if you have nothing else and it's early in the run. And the second half of this trinket is if you're at that same two or less speed, when you get hit, you have a chance to get a block token. This is a bit better than just the gain on missed strength, though it really helps your slow tanks. You know, when Hellion gets winded, man at arms just slow him down with pipe weed, leper is already a pretty slow unit. So it's very easy to get the block off of this if you're trying to. Now we're on to the tier two trinkets, the distant trinkets, and we'll start with armory key. This thing is just not that great. It's not bad on paper, but finding the stuff you need to get either the bonus HP or the bonus damage is not an easy task. If you end up finding the armory key, make sure you're checking the tags on your items as well as your trinkets to make sure that you can activate this. The next distant trinket is really good. 
and that is the Blistering Bugle. You go first, you have a chance of giving yourself vulnerable, but tanks aren't that fast, generally speaking. And at the start of your turn, you have a 50-50 chance of giving yourself Taunt. Taunt is very powerful, your tanks always want Taunt, and this saves them a button press. The Stone Mount may not seem like much at first, because all it does is upgrade block tokens to block plus. However, it does a great job of saving you early mastery points. So if you're running a character that can generate block, and you don't want to give them the mastery to get the block plus version, you can just throw on Stone Mount, and every turn that they generate block, it upgrades. The next two trinkets are easy to confuse because they're very similar, but actually mechanically slightly different in the trigger conditions, and that makes one of them much better than the other. First is Insulating Insignia. This gives you a chance of giving other teammates at the start of the turn a chance of having a block token. This can be very helpful in drawn out fights because you're constantly rolling chances of giving block out and there are times where it can save lives. The next trinket is very similar and that is Unwavering Standard. Instead of giving out block to one person at the start of the turn, this gives everyone a chance at the start of combat to receive block. The chance is 33% as is the other one. However, the reason I feel that the Insignia is better is that it works every single turn. Unwavering Standard is not bad by any means, but each person only has a chance to gain one block, and that's it. Either way though, I will not shy away from any chance to generate free defense, though honestly none of the trinkets out of here are actually bad. With all that said, the trinkets out of the Tangle benefit mostly tanks and slow heroes, but with some creativity, all of them can be useful. Now that we talked about everything having to do with the Tangle, let's talk about the best heroes to take. The first one is Plague Doctor for a couple of reasons. The first is during the general fight, she has the ability to not only hit the tap root, but also the general himself with Plague Grenade, so she can constantly keep the pressure on and the roots off. The next benefit of Plague Doctor is she has a couple different answers to bleed. The first is Battlefield Medicine, which will cure it as well as curing the hero if they're under 50% health. And then she has the often overlooked ounce of prevention, which can raise the entire party's bleed resistance. The one risk in taking Plague Doctor is that she is not the healthiest or most offensive character, so she is one of the ones most at risk for the dreaded Waking Dead 30 damage crit into Bleed. The next hero that's really good to take to the Tangle is Occultus. Occultus, especially after the rework, does have quite a few answers to the things happening in the Tangle. When you're fighting the heavy hitters, he's able to put weaken tokens on them through his curse, and if there's a bunch of block, he can either rip it off or neutralize it by using vulnerability hex. He comes with corpse destruction, so if you're against bishops and they're proving to be annoying, you can get rid of the corpses before they're revived. And when you're fighting the general, he has the ability to, like Plague Doctor, hit the root and the general to keep up that pressure. And then also don't sleep on Malediction. Very good against lair bosses, and the general is no exception. The third hero that I will suggest is kind of possibly a surprise pick, and that is Runaway. Runaway is able to hit the root very reliably during the fight. She can also blind enemies, so all those heavy hits have a chance of missing. And then she can also cure bleed. Remember, it's not just Firefly that can hit the root, it's also Hearthlight. So if you're running some wacky stuff, you have options. Fourth and final hero that I will suggest taking to the Tangle is Vestal. Vestal has consistent healing output, even though her cooldowns are a bit long, but she can get the job done, and she also has ministrations to cure bleeds. The other way she keeps your team safe is with Consecration of Fortitude. All of those dodge and block tokens, especially against the general, are always helpful. Alright, y'all, that's gonna do it for the video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. Check out the description box for all the cool links. Get ready for the next region guide, which I'm not sure which it is yet. So whatever one you want to see, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.